are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. How are you today, Lauren? I am good. How about you? Uh, well, you know, for someone my age, I'm doing pretty darn good. <laughs> You'll see when you get there. You got long ways, long ways to go. Although, uh, with that being said, I have a couple of serious questions to ask you. Um, how in the hell? I mean, I watched some of your stunt uh, action footage uh, mm-hmm. today. Okay, seriously, how in the hell are you? Have you managed not to kill yourself, or <laughs> at least end up in the hospital most of the time? Oh man. Um everything's calculated when we we do these stunt stunt uh gags like um the stunt coordinator really like takes the time to really think about how to do it safely yeah um and then um yeah i mean of course i've been to the hospital and i've gotten hurt um you don't see those parts of course yeah (laughs) um but yeah yeah it's uh, pretty incredible (laughs) what we go through it really is and you know i kind of figured that of course, you're, you're, it's a stunt, and there's some, uh, you know, there's always going to be some risk, you know, that you could get injured. But just, you know, looking at that, it would be, oh my God, you know, <laughs> you're, you really, so in some sense, you really act, are acting when you're doing these stunts, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Until the moment they they say cut, you are still like writhing in pain or living in that moment of whatever that scene is. Yeah, and. uh so you're the faceless action hero. Does that bother you at all? Uh, it's funny. My manager made up that sentence for me, and I'm like, oh, I guess that works. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, we are behind the actors. We are their doubles, so they get the you know they get the light. They get the the you know um, they get the spotlight. Yeah, we're right. used to it, and that's just part of our jobs. Well, you know, yeah, we all have a place, you know, as long as you can handle that. I'm mm-hmm. too narcissistic for that. I think if I was able to do anything, <laughs> you know, in film, I don't want to be on the front end of that thing. But my goodness, it's impressive to see the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, that they can do with uh, with film and everything. It's, a, it's mind blowing. Does it take you a long time to, uh, you know, when you're uh, doing a certain movie, does it take you quite a bit of time to get all this down to where it looks real? Yeah, we, we do get rehearsals, um, especially if it's like a wire gag, we get lots of rehearsal. If it's a fight scene, we get rehearsals. Um, yeah, we everything, like I said, was calculated and, you know, thought out. So that's why we're able to do what we're do- we get to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I see that as a child, you train in acrobatics and dance. Yeah. And then you moved to Los Angeles uh, to be a dancer. Yeah, yeah. And- that Tell us a little bit dream. about that 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 move to Los Angeles, and I know you you ended up being a Laker girl, but just kind of tell us a little bit how that went down. Well, you know, I didn't know anything else. I, I just danced my whole life, so it was just a natural progression that I wanted to do, and I just was like, I you know, um, I thought it'd be a fun little thing to make some money, so you know, I moved to LA, you know, hoping to do tours, and music videos, and I did. I did do all that. Um, but then I just feel, felt like it wasn't really me. Um, the industry itself just was, uh, I don't know. I just didn't really fit in with the dance industry. And then I met a bunch of stunt guys and they started training me in the falls and reactions and fight scenes and, uh, you know, all these different things. And I was just like, wow, this is like, this is like really resonates. And, um, then I just started getting into that and it just, I never looked back. I, I just felt like, I was more of a tomboy at heart, I think. And that's just who I was and just a daredevil. And like, I remember when I was like, I think I was like 10, I was like at some amusement park and we were on a tram and I had my friend's hat on and it flew off and I'm like, oh no. So I jumped off the moving tram to go get it. And I oh. like rolled off in the concrete and I was like, oh, like I just don't even think. So. Yeah, that's I was where, just like, your, yeah, your that's career, part of stunt work. Yeah, your career was born. Uh, I'm curious to know about the uh, the Laker girls. Okay, I mean, what what kind of competition was there to become a Laker girl? What's all involved in that? Man, it's uh, like you audition. You, you do like one audition at Staples Center, and um, there's like hundreds or even thousands of girls there. Yeah, and then they cut. They do a cut that day. And then they, I think they do another cut and they do another dance portion. And then, then you come back for an interview 
because it's not just about dance it's about yeah. your personality yeah and then they make a cut off that and then they do another dance audition to make their final cut and then that was yeah it was so it was like a week process um in order to become a laker girl and and with that being said is there more to it than just I mean, obviously, they want you to have a personality and you have to be able to dance uh, uh, to probably a, a great degree. But did you have to travel with the team or were you only performing when the Lakers were at home? Yeah, we only perform for home games. And then huh. we also do like charity events, promo events um, around like California. So sometimes we get to travel, but mostly we stayed in our state in, in L.A. Yeah, if you don't mind me asking, did you get paid well to do stuff like that? To be oh, a man. Um, I mean, you do it more for the experience. Yeah. And I think I booked it when I was like 18 years old. So like any money was good money. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. working at like Abercrombie and Fitch. So it was a big step from that. No kidding. But I think it was more about the, you know, the bragging rights and like to say you were a Laker girl. And I got a championship ring. So that was pretty. Oh, cool. that's cool. You guys get yeah. that. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Uh, interesting. Um, and then uh, you got to, I mean, so you get into uh, acting. How did this work out for you where you got your kind of walk us through? I mean, it, you know, uh, it seems to me that it's much harder than it looks to do any of the stuff that you're doing, including getting a gig. I mean, how did this all happen? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to get gigs like this and and they're failing. And, and maybe that happened to you. But why don't you let us know a little bit about that path that you've been on? I started like 17 years ago. So, you know, for me back then there, if you look on TV 17 years ago, there was hardly any Asian actors or uh, it, hardly, we weren't represented as nearly as we are now. So there was way less jobs for me to double, uh, to be like in a, a role. Um, there just was less opportunity. So yeah, I would literally work for one day and one month and then sometimes not work for several months after. Yeah. So I had to have like random jobs, you know, I had so many random jobs just to make ends meet. And it was a difficult struggle. I'm not going to lie. Like it took a lot of time to get to where I am. And, you know, I trained my butt off. Like, yeah, it, it, it was a constant struggle. I think a lot of people don't know that, you know, you, you see somebody who's, you know, like I said, you have an impressive uh, resume and you see this and the average person goes, well, well lucky duck, you know, but they really, we really don't know as you're mentioning how much sacrifice there actually goes into all this stuff and that's pretty common among most people that are making it in any in the industry it's there's more to it than meets the eye what did you have a good foundation like a good background your parents or somebody that really was there for you i know you're you must be driven yourself but did you have a a good uh, foundation mentors or anything like that yeah, I mean, you can't do this all alone, I feel. Like, uh, I have very supportive parents. I mean, the fact that they allowed me to be in this industry. I mean, of course, in the beginning, they were like, when are you going to get a real job? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, they stuck through it with me. And, um, you know, they were there for me during the hardships. And, you know, I had different martial art instructors that helped me on the way. Um, friends in the industry that helped me get jobs, like, endless amount of people have helped me. And so, uh, yeah, you cannot do this alone. I mean, it's just a really, like the entertainment industry alone is just such a, uh, a very difficult industry for your, you know, for your ego. And yeah. there's just tons of rejection constantly. So, oh, there's my cat. Yeah, hey, that's okay. <laughs> He's doing a stunt. They just want attention. Cause they, sure. they yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so what was your first gig that you did? And tell us about uh, how were you, were you, were you nervous and what, what kind of stuff was going on in your head? Man, the first, I mean, I, the first couple jobs, of course I was nervous. Um, I think the first one was for some Nickelodeon show doubling a, a kid actor. And I had to do some backflips down a hallway and the director was F Fred Savage. Um, oh, I know who he is. Yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> I'm yeah 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 and it was like a quick day it was just like in and out and i'm like wow is this how it works and yeah. no it does not it work it, it's like the opposite of that usually you're there waiting like many hours a day not doing anything um and then another job i had to um me and another girl were doubling lucy Liu for a commercial and we had to act like we we're running on water so they made these platforms in the lake 
and then we don't see this boat and then we do like a header a flip over the boat and fall into the water yeah. and that one i was terrified of doing <laughs> because i've never that? done anything um a because i've never done any like tripping over a boat and doing uh -huh. a flip over a boat and then uh you know there's so many people watching you crew members the stunt coordinator the other stunt double like a lot of pressure so i wasn't yeah. used to that and you know when yeah. you're new to an industry it's nerve-wracking yeah so how do you get used to that pressure is it done by repetition being the mother of skill obviously you're throwing yourself out there and i, I assume that some of this that helps is that you prepare for what you're going to do but it's kind of like a, i've heard this uh, term before just the other day too you know you get ready for a game or a match a, a boxer gets ready but the first time you get punched in the face all your uh your the strategy that you had seems to kind of go away a little bit once you get punched in the mouth how do you handle all that uh you know to be able to perform and obviously you you when you're performing you don't do it right the first time and how does that weigh on you like some god is you know thir 13th take you know how do you how do you deal with all that yeah i, I definitely have been through all of that too um uh yeah there's been times where i've been doing gags where it's like literally the 13th take and you're like why am i not getting this and yeah. uh of course it, it it's a mental block and um you know what i try to do is i try to stay positive i try to always envision the gag do it going exactly how i want it to i think about all the notes that people give it give to me and i try to do everything and be conscious of remembering everything um yeah it, it, you know, it's a mind game sometimes, and that's all it is. And that's where yeah. you just have to like push through that. I've talked to, uh, I got a, a couple of buddies that have been in the, um, in the military, like special forces. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments that they made uh, before, and I think this applies to what you're saying in a little different way, but they said, you have to get used to being comfortable in the uncomfortable because you're all, you know, it's like when you have bullets flying by, you have to be able to perform under that pressure. And the same thing happens with you, you know, you have to be able to perform under that pressure. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's just, it, it's always more than, than meets the eye. Uh, you know, um, and it's, you, you're best known for your uh, work on, is it the Mandalorian? Mandalorian? Mm -hmm. What is that? You don't know Mandalorian? No, I, I don't. I, I watch tennis and things. I, I've never watched that. <laughs> Tell me about this. <laughs> um, well, it's a Star a Star Wars project, and ah. it's on Disney Plus. It was their first Star Wars made for Disney Plus TV show. Um, that is the birth of Baby Yoda. I mean, I'm sure you know Baby Yoda, right? I heard the name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's yeah, a little bit so, of an age gap here. I, I I don't know about this stuff. I'm learning though. Each time I come on the show with somebody, yeah, tell us um, about this. It's just a you know they took from like start the star they basically took the mandalorian and they made him a character on his own show and basically they're getting another storyline through the star wars universe okay. and it just profiles the life of you know how baby yoda came about and who he is and trying to get him back to his home um and that's really the gist of what the show's about but it just became uh, huge with fans uh, people fell in love with the Mandalorian. Like it's just a great show. It's good for kids. Um, you know, I dub. I was fortunate enough to double a bunch of girls on that show, season one and season two. Uh, season one, my most recognized fight is uh, doubling Emily Swallow, who is the armorer. Uh, she does this really amazing fight at the end of season or of this season, um, and yeah, and that was just um, just a, an amazing you know, opportunity to be a part of Star Wars. How many seasons did that last? Um, well, we did season two and I doubled a bunch of different actors for that. And um, I think they're gonna go into production of season three soon. So I think it's just gonna keep going until fans don't want anymore, but they're, they, they definitely love the show. So I think it's gonna keep going. So I see here Furious, is that Fast and Furious? Yes. Okay, so you worked with The Rock, right? Was he on that? Yeah, he was. I didn't work with him personally. He was not in my scenes, but yeah. And how long, that had to, what, seven seasons? Is that what that, or that's the seventh, uh, uh, seventh, it wasn't a season, was it? It's an episode? No, it was a it's movie. It's a movie. movie. It's a movie. Yeah. Well, you really don't watch any of these shows I or don't. movies. <laughs> I really don't. I'm trying super hard to get him into it, but he just, he just won't. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in a whole different category here. I'm, I'm really, really trying to get educated by you. So well, tell me all about that. How did the Fast and Furious, what were you doing on that show? Um, I actually had uh, the opportunity to fight Michelle Rodriguez. Uh, so I was playing a guard in, I think, yeah, Fast 7. And um, she's wearing a dress and we're, we're Middle Eastern guards, which was kind of cool because in the Middle East, they actually have women guards there. Like they actually are in real life female guards for royalty i think yeah. um so yeah we we got to do a badass fight with her um and we worked with ronda rousey oh wow. uh, so that was really cool because you know she's legendary yeah yeah and uh did she uh ronda rousey did um do you have to learn how to fight her is that what you did in that show Movie? um no she was part of our team so she did not fight us she fought michelle rodriguez as well um, but she was an amazing, like, obviously she is an MMA fighter who fights people for real, but she oh. was, she was able to learn how to fight for movies and not hurt people. And she did such an amazing job. Yeah. Um, you, you, obviously you've been, you've taken Taekwondo with some of the martial arts. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Are you pretty, uh, are you like a black belt, a brown belt? How much, how much does this all really uh, factor into? Cause I assume that it would, uh, in the, in the, sh in the movies that you do. Uh, uh, how, how much have you taken in the arts like that? Um, so Taekwondo was my first martial art and I got a black belt in that. And then after that, I started training in Wushu, which is a Chinese martial art. And then from there, I went to the Inosanto Academy where I trained in um, Kali, which is stick fighting. Um, I did Silat, which is an Indonesian martial art. Muay Thai, which is Thai, a Thai boxing. Um, and JKD, which is Bruce Lee's martial art. And then from there, I started training in Capoeira at a different school. So I just tried to learn as many different martial arts as I could because A, it's something I love and B, it's something that's just great to have for my line of work to have that knowledge of different martial arts. Let's take a quick pause to tell you about something you're definitely gonna want. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief in the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Would you say that you've used all of them at some point in time in your career? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for when sure. When you learn when you learn that many different uh, styles of the martial arts, is it you know um, um, multitasking or having learning a lot of a lot of arts like that? I would think it would be harder to be more proficient at them than if you focused on maybe one style. Is that true or not? I mean, how can you keep up with that? You have is there a certain amount of time that you need to put up? put into this to make sure that you're fluent in your moves and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I, I definitely dilute myself by training in different martial arts, but yeah. that's just part of who I want to be because I just want to be well versed yeah. um, and just have the knowledge of each versus being a master necessarily in one. But yeah. then there's people like Guru Inosanto who is a master in many martial arts. He's like 83 years old yeah. and he's very good at a lot. <laughs> Who's been your your um, favorite uh, master or person that's, that you've uh, been taught by with an art? Who's who's that been? Uh, I have a lot. I'm mean, Jun Chong was my first martial art teacher. He was my Taekwondo instructor. Uh, Dan Inasanto. Obviously, I've learned so many amazing like life les lessons from him. Um, and then my Capoe instructor Alfred Kendrick. Like he has just always been by my side and just a good influence on my life. They've all been just. You know positive people so yeah. yeah have they have they been on set with you before some of these people uh no actually none of them have <laughs> okay. no yeah um uh tell me how the um you know diet and exercise impacts us all to some degree 
obviously you have to be in good shape. Do you do any kind of uh, weight training? What's your your uh, I know you do your martial arts and, and that kind of thing. Any weight weight training that you're doing uh, for your your craft? Yeah, I like to do like Tabata or HIT training, like fast and never stop moving kind of training, and it's usually quick. Um, I like to do plyometrics. I love to do yoga. Um, those are my fitness things I like to do, and then either walking or running. But so then you don't, I, I you don't do any weight training then? I do light weights. I do I do weights. Yeah. Yeah. And is it something that you've learned on your own or have you had also people working with you to make sure that you do it right? Um, I go to different fitness places and um, I get, you know, I learn from them and then sometimes I'll just train on my own. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's your uh, nutrition look like? Are you on any kind of a, a special diet? Man, I used to try every diet you could think of and I just realized it just doesn't work. I think for me personally, I think it's uh, cutting the, uh, the amount in half. Cause I was just overeating. And, oh. um, once I cut down the portion size and I can still eat what I want to eat. Like if I want desserts, I'm not going to deprive myself, but I just know that I just have smaller meals and I like to eat like at a certain uh, window, like 11 to 6 PM is like my window when I eat and not eat after 6 PM. Yeah, you know, in my line of work, because I'm in the in the uh, I'm personal training studios, and I work with clients from all walks of life. I've worked with uh, you know major league, uh, the guys at at the highest level. And you're right about the portion control. That's really the the most important thing. Besides, I would say that protein is also a, a major factor. I don't know if you pay attention to your protein intake, but the portion control is actually kind of my philosophy as well with most of my people because I let them know it's basically it's a it's a transfer of calories. And that way you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, in my line of work, people stress out about the diet. There's three components. There's the weight training and there's cardio and there's the nutrition. And the nutrition part of it is usually the most difficult for most people to deal with. But I think you're, you're on, on target with that. Do you count calories or anything like that? No, that would make, actually drive me crazy more because yeah. it gets me more obsessive and then it made me more hungry. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so what are you working on uh, currently and sort of what does your path look like? How do you keep yourself working besides being really good at what you do? Um, what's my path like? Um, you know, I'm actually coordinating a movie soon. So I should be, I'm going to be in pre-production for that in a couple months. Um, I might be going to New Orleans for a job. I don't know the names. They never give, give us <laughs> names. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the thing with now is like projects, they, they like you to be very secret. Like they don't like to tell you a lot because they just like everything to be a secret. So that's why interviews can be a little boring because we can't talk about any of them. Yeah, and, uh, and when you say you're coordinating, are you the, uh, coordinating like the work that somebody else is gonna be doubling or are you coordinating the, the stunt work for yourself? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Um, so usually there's a stunt coordinator on set of a film or a TV project and they're in charge of the whole department of stunts. Okay. So they do the meetings with production. They, uh, set up the stunts, they hire the people. So I would actually be in that position. Yeah. And, and, I, and I assume that when you go out on, on, uh, the set, you're there for how long? I mean, I know it takes like a movie. How long do you actually have to get up, pick up and move and be out there on location? I assume. Yeah, um, typically it's a 12 hour day, but sometimes films will shoot later, 14 hours, 16, 18. Yeah. But I think now with COVID, they try to like limit the time to like 10 to 12 hour days now, which yeah. is kind of nice. Yeah, so you're away from, are you, do you have a family, I assume? Uh, yeah, I'm married. Yeah, so you guys have to uh, you spend a fair amount of time when you're gone, it's just your time away, right? Yeah, it, it's really hard in relationships yeah, because and nothing so. shoots in my hometown. Like I live in LA and nothing yeah. shoots there anymore. Everything's elsewhere. So I feel like I'm always gone. Yeah. Why is it shooting elsewhere? Is it because of uh, finances? It's cheaper to shoot somewhere else? Yeah, I feel like every state has a tax break and yeah. we just don't give those out. And then even countries like Canada has a great tax break. Uh, the UK, a lot of things are shooting there now. Australia. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's kind of... It's, it's it's frustrating sometimes that you know Hollywood's not in Hollywood anymore. It's crazy. I know the. Uh, I, it seems like uh, I've heard that a lot of uh, Georgia offers some really good 
uh, tax breaks, and pe- a lot of people go there to shoot movies. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Have you ever been there shooting movies? Yeah. Have yeah, you? I was just there um, most of this year. I was there already. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I heard there for a while, as far as uh, various countries, Bulgaria seemed to be one that uh, I know the Expendables, I think, shot quite a bit over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bulgaria, like everywhere. Hungary, there's a lot of shooting there. Yeah. What uh, What do you think the what What is the uh, for a stunt person? What is the average sort of the lifespan as far as how much you can work? Because it looks like it is pretty physical. Well, how do you see? I mean, how long do, would you want to uh, be in that line of work? And how long do stunt people last in the industry? Pretty much. You know, it's case by case because some people start coordinating really young like 30 35 and then they're just coordinating and you can coordinate forever because you're not using your body you're the boss yeah Yeah. um whereas some people you know they want to stop working but 45 50 years old they want to stop hitting the ground um stunt drivers can drive up until whenever 65 (laughs) 70 if they wanted to um yeah it just depends on what you you're you know what you're what you do mainly and like fight people's they usually start stop tapering off around 40 to 50 years old so it just varies how much your body's being like yeah, used so. and like you know wear and tear yeah is it very easy to sort of change your your path like right now you're in a you're in and your stunts are very uh, physical it seems like to me uh, is it easy enough for someone like yourself for example to sort of change that as you're getting older uh can you change it to where you're not doing that much you know the physicality part of it and you're doing like the stunt driver is that possible are you sort of pigeonholed into like you're known for this and these are the only roles you can get i think you can you know shape your own reality i think um you know for me i want to assistant coordinate more and coordinate more so you know, I am already starting to do that already, um, you know, to fight coordinate, I would love to do more of that. And that would not take a toll on my body because other younger performers can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and you, you know, I've turned down jobs because I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I, I could probably have the ability to do that more now. So, you know, yeah, you can, you just change with how your life evolves, I think. Yeah. You know, um, when you're getting into where you actually do the stunt yourself and then you are the person that is teaching somebody else how to do that, it kind of reminds me of a coach. And mm-hmm. one of the things that I learned when I was playing uh, football and, and my sports that I, I was playing, I learned that there were some coaches that were um, better athletes and they could actually perform the, in this case, the stunt or the activity, but they weren't quite as good as a coach because they didn't have the ability to be able to teach somebody how to do something. You know, there's an act, an an art to doing that, to be able to communicate what you know and Mm -hmm. to have somebody else perform that the way you would want them. I mean, so it's what kind of changes do you have to make, do you think, to become, let's just say down the road, more of a coach? Because I don't think it's a natural, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. because of what you just, what I just said, I don't think it's a natural uh, evolution necessarily. To, you know, you can be a great stunt uh, person like you are, but not really a great stunt coach. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think it takes practice too. Um, so for me, I've had a lot of practice training my actors, and I get to train them in wires or fight scenes, and you know, and someone that doesn't have maybe the background as some stunt performers have, it's even more of a challenge to teach them. Um, so yeah, I've had that practice and I had, I had the opportunity to make them look really good for camera to the point where they didn't need to use me for certain scenes. So, um, yeah, that, that has definitely helped me into coaching people how to do stunts. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's a complete s- skill set that you have to harness and, you know, some people have it more naturally than others and some do not. So, you know, you just, it's a learning curve, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, firsthand experience is really hard to replace, you know, like you're saying, you have to have the experience yourself when you're working. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting more of the, uh, the image, but you're saying uh, some other things that leads me to believe when you're doing your stunt work, you have other actors that you're stunting with, correct? Mm-hmm. And you said that you're teaching those actors uh, when you're doing your own stunt work. Is that right? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes I will fight actors to get their coverage. So say the camera's behind me and I'm doing a fight scene with them and I'm having doing the scene with them. So sometimes you have to give them notes, how to perform it better, how to make it look stronger. So yeah. And these are obviously other stunt people that you're working with, correct? Sometimes they're stunt people and sometimes they're, they're actors. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who's the, is there like a, an actor that's out there that you've worked with that's known for, and again, I don't know what I'm talking about. Some actors want to do their own stunts versus having somebody else do the stunts for them. Have you, um, I assume that you've dealt with that. And can you name anybody that we might would, would know that actually like to perform their own double uh, own stunts? I think there's a lot of actors that like to do their own stunts and some of them get to have the opportunity and some look really good doing it. Like um, obviously Tom Cruise is the most famous one. He does a lot of his own stunts and he's actually very agile and athletic. Yeah. Um, Matt Damon, he has a stunt double, but he also is very agile and he looks really good when he does fight scenes. Um, yeah, I mean, some of my actors, um, you know, they want to do as much as they can safely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's a good thing that they do do it because that helps with the camera, you know, not hiding a face. Um, I always think it's a good thing when actors can do their own stunts um, safely. Yeah. You know, I was so, would assume that these actors that like to do their own stunts, they're obviously they put the time in because I would think that would slow the production down. I mean, if you know the moves that need to be done and you're having to teach somebody like an actor, just because I want to do a stunt doesn't mean I can. And, you know, but if I'm a big actor, I might insist that I want to do that. So do they allow for that? Do they give the actor time to, you know, learn that enough to where they can do that on screen? I assume walk, walk us sometimes, through that. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the show. Like if it's a, it, you know, if they have time and rehearsal time to teach the actor, yes, they'll absolutely teach um, the actor like a wire gag um, or, you know, I, I, the last job I was on, I got to teach my actress different wire gags and she did a really good job and she had the time to train it. Um, and, and then there's times where there's zero time, like TV, especially we have zero time to teach the actor because they're constantly shooting different episodes. And so therefore they have to use the stunt double. So it's just case by case. Yeah, 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 that's what you mean. Tell me what a wire gag is. I've heard you say that now about three times. What is a wire gag? So when you watch TV or a movie, like you see like someone jump, oh, like for instance, uh, Tom Cruise jumped from one building to another. Obviously yeah. he's not doing that for real. Right. <laughs> so right. he has an assistance of a wire team and he's harnessed and they put him on a, a like a system and then they're able to help lift him and he acts the motion and he does some of the movements to help with the physicality of the realism of it. And then the, the, the wire team can actually help him you know, travel further than he really physically can do it. So, okay, yeah, so that's, when you're saying a wire, are these people like harness up with a wire? I assume that's, you know, tied to something. And how is yeah. it that we don't see that? Because in post they can erase all the wires oh. and stuff. Yeah. But they wear their harness underneath their costume, so you would never know. Okay. So they, they I didn't know that, Charlie. They erased that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Of course. Right. Oh, my God. Visual effects is amazing what they can do. I have a, I have a question about that. Um, you know, for the viewers that don't know, Leo's behind a mm -hmm. green screen right now. But, uh, or in front of a green screen. You did The Mandalorian, and it was like the first time, I believe, that there it wasn't green screen. There was like a virtual set. Yeah. And how, how was that like? stupid amazing to see or was it weird because isn't it when the camera is moving the background was moving as well right yeah was yeah it weird? was no it was just so freaking cool <laughs> i mean that's like the future that is going to be the future of how they shoot things now and it was it wasn't even just 360 it was also above so i remember there was one scene they were in a ship or something i can't remember what scene it was but um when you look up when camera panned up you actually saw the top of like a ship or the environment so it they oh man they took the time really to develop that technology and i think they're going to do that for all the star wars streaming shows i mean i, I heard james cameron saw it and he was amazed by it like it's just amazing technology this technology do you as an actor do you have to kind of like keep up with that you know this as it's as it's uh, progressing like that I mean, you don't know how you, you don't know have to you don't have to learn how to do it or use it but it's just what's no, going on you, in the background I mean, there yeah, you, it's easier for them to live in that scene because they don't have to imagine it now. I think as an actor, you can actually 
really like you really feel like you're in that universe um you don't have to pretend as much and i think it's a great tool for actors now hmm. I, yeah i would say for um directors or yeah like the editors or special effects because i know working with green screen it's like like once i get you leo you're there yeah. you know like i really can't do much but there's they're kind of seen on camera already how it's gonna look you know what yeah. i mean yeah it's and it looks crazy. so good on camera like when you watch playback it looks so real yeah i had no idea my mind was blown <laughs> yeah I gotta, I gotta watch some of this stuff so i can blow my mind <laughs> <laughs> Shit. no you know what you need to watch and i have a question um my favorite i think in comics everybody would say it's batman and catwoman but my favorite relationship's always been daredevil and electra and you mm. got to play that is one of my favorite tv shows of all time um wow. how was that getting to play electra yeah that was incredible because i you know i got to work with elodie young who plays electra obviously um to help harness and help develop her character like her movement and so that was just a fun thing to creatively do with an actor and like you know we got to brainstorm like how she would move during this scene and um to have that ability as a stunt performer was very freeing do you know eric do you know eric eric the one that was uh i can't think of his last name right now i feel really bad um the one that was the punisher's stunt double oh eric linden yes, yes he's a good linden. friend of mine yeah yeah we just had him on the podcast really yes that's guy. right I remember that guy yeah um <laughs> so tell me uh and all the how many years have you been doing your stunt doubling 17 already 17 and uh any injuries that stand out any stuff that you've seen that it was you know i've occasionally you'll hear somebody that's gotten really hurt really bad on a set have, have you experienced it in 17 years i would assume some stuff's gone down uh anything happened to you like that um, unfortunately, I haven't had anything as gnarly as that, like where it was like life changing. I have a lot of friends that have had some life changing accidents on set. And that's very scary. Uh, knock on wood. I just, you know, I've had concussions, uh, sprained ankles, gashes in my chin, um, you know, stuff like that. But the funny thing is I get probably more injured during training. Um, <laughs> you know, I've why, broken why, is, why is that? Um, because it's, you know, I train a lot. I train a lot. I train hard sometimes. And then I used to spar. And so when I would spar, I would get, you know, kicked in the head, kicked in the face, broken nose. Um, yeah. So I've had all that. <laughs> what do you have in your line of work? I assume that you are protected by some kind of insurance. I mean, if something happens to you, or are you just. Yeah, we have insurance. We have health insurance. That's pretty good, decent. I would think so. You know, just yeah. stuff that like that happens. Yeah. Obviously, you make money when you're working. Um, so where do we go? Where do you go from here? I know you have you got some stuff going on in New Orleans. Anything else? The stuff now at this stage of the game, being in, in the business 17 years, does it come to you now? Or do you still have to be proactive to make sure that you are staying relative and staying out there? I mean, the way to stay relative in our business is literally social media now. Um, I try to post as much as I can, you know, you know, different gags i did i like to post those stuff behind the scenes um footage um previouses which is basically um a pre-visualization pre -visualization of what a fight scene would look like mm. um sometimes i shoot my own fights um, but i do it more for my creativity as well but then people in the industry see it and it, it reminds them that i'm still here yeah. um so it, it all helps um but most of the time i'd say you know it's easier to get work now that i've been in the industry for sure yeah. Not, you, nothing like how it was in the beginning that's yeah so right. you're not going you're not constantly going on uh on auditions and things like that as much as you used to then yeah correct yeah and i i would imagine that it's nicer because do you do you feel like you can you have you can choose more what you want to do than I, again i'm not i don't know if you just took you know i'm thinking what would i do if i was in in you know just starting out in the industry i'm pretty sure i'd take some jobs that i really didn't want just to keep money coming through the door and uh, I would imagine it's uh, maybe a good feeling that you can start choosing kind of the, the movies that you want. Would that be an accurate statement or question? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't like to turn down work, but if it's someone I don't want to work with, then yeah, maybe I won't take the job. But um, I've been fortunate enough to work with people I really enjoy working with. So, yeah. Yeah. And do you ever get to the point where you wonder if you're going to get another gig or this is it? I mean, does that ever enter in your mind or are you comfortable? No, that 
I, I try to, I try to see positive, I think. Cause once yeah. you get in that mindset, I mean, I just feel like it's a dark place. <laughs> it really so, is. Yeah, I try to stay positive. You know, the thought is the most powerful thing in the world, but it can work both ways for you. Mm-hmm, what, what's definitely. easier, um, the movies or like uh, the cartoons and video games and stuff? Uh, what's easier? Like more, yeah, what's easier? Like, is it, uh, would it be, because you're, I'm, I'm guessing you're on the suits with the cartoon, the cartoons and the video games. Um, are you? They're just different. I wouldn't say one's easier than the other. Um it's less time consuming for the motion capture because you don't have other departments picking at you like wardrobe, hair, makeup, you know, you just shoot. Um, so things you? move a lot faster for mocap. Yeah. In, in Mortal Kombat, was it just like, is it always you fighting with someone or is it just like them kind of getting your moves? Um, if it, it depends, like in game stuff, like uh, when the character is like doing certain moves to another character, like fighting moves, um, usually it's just me, but if it's like the cinematic things in between each chapter, then yes, we have uh, people that we do fight scenes with. So fascinating. I know. It's so it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> a lot of ways to make money, <laughs> you know, create yeah. a livelihood. Do you ever see yourself at some point um, uh, transitioning from behind the scenes to the faceless, from the faceless action hero to somebody in front of the camera? Do you ever see that happening for you? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I've, I definitely have booked some roles as myself, which is always fun because I, I just love acting. Um, yeah, I think there's opportunity out there now for me to be more as the actor and doing my own stunts. Yeah, definitely. And when the camera goes, you know, action, do you turn into somebody else? I mean, I know like when, when I'm, for example, and this is a poor example, I don't, I, I'm really afraid uh, to do public speaking. That was a big fear and, that, and that's a big fear for a lot of people but i have to tell you i've learned to tolerate that and and i'm able to when they when i have to be in front of an audience i turn i become somebody else uh, do you become somebody else when you you know are in 100 front of them? yeah 100 percent because um I'm a very vocal person. So I say this a lot, like during my mo- motion capture work, um, you know, usually I'm playing some unearthly character, like, uh, man, like I'll play a vampire or a bug lady or, you know, it, it's something really randomly different than who I am. So I have to transform to make yeah. that character alive. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I definitely am very vocal and I like, will see then like, breathe like them walk like them like make noises like them <laughs> so yeah is that something that comes pretty natural to you or is it something that you uh, we call it spretta in fashion making something hard look easy you know it looks easy on camera and i don't know if you're just one of those people that's just a, a pure natural or do you have to practice and a lot of repetitions to make it look natural I think for me, uh, you know, I was always a shy person growing up, but once I started taking acting classes, it got me out of my shell because we did a lot of improv, improv uh, drills that really helped. And, you know, you really have to become uninhibited, not care what people think. Oh. And so that really helped me with that. And then, um, you know, doing a lot of helmet work, like I, when I, another side job I did was being a power ranger for like different like parades and like um charity events so that actually brought me out of my show a lot too because you're interacting with children um you think you're an invisible but you're not everyone's staring at you so yeah you really have to be uninhibited to do any of these roles because that you know you gotta just not care (laughs) all that stuff that you did way back when just kind of prepped you for where you're at today i guess yeah definitely And then you just got to go, that's that process that you have to go through that we over here on this side just never really understand. Hey, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Is there anything that you would like to tell us before we leave as far as uh, be watching out for you? Uh, I know some of the stuff that you're doing is sort of secret, but anything you'd like to tell us before we, before we exit? Yeah, um, please follow me on uh, Instagram. That's where I, I post a lot of my behind the scenes footage of different shows I work on and pictures. Um, you can see some Star Wars stuff there and um, Star Girl and different projects I've worked on. And then um, I actually have a YouTube channel where I shoot a lot of my own fights uh, where I'm actually in it. <laughs> was that um, you, called- the, the Mandalorian short film? Like, I know it was yeah. you, but was it like, did you, 
Was that your project? Yeah, that was mine. I, me and my friend Amy wrote that project and we produced it and we just had fun with it. We just like to shoot our own projects for our own creativity. It was really funny and good. Really good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Nice. Hey, listen, um, I thank you for coming on the show and, and the best of luck in your, um, you know, in your career. I'm going to have to check some of this stuff out and get with it. <laughs> Looks yeah. like I'm behind the behind the game a little bit. Anyway, thank you for coming. I really do appreciate <laughs> thank you. you coming on. Thanks a lot. Thank you so Take much. Care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at seriousgrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.